Hey guys, so I'm waiting in line to get my oil changed. Figured it's a good time to post a video because I went to find my channel to share a link and I realized you can't find me if there's no content. So this will be the first video and so I'll tell you about a call I ran this morning. So the call was we've got an indoor fan coil that's being noisy. Now this is a 8 ton ducted unit and the model is PEFY P96NMHSU-E and I'll post a picture of that. Um, not exactly sure it was causing the noise. I took a look at it while I was there wondering if it was airflow. If you've ever wondered how the airflow in these these indoor fan coils work there's basically two ways that that's set. Number one there's a dip switch or a set of dip switches inside the unit in the board that is going to select a static pressure range. And then based off of that static pressure range, what you end up with are different fan curves. So if your fan is at a certain static pressure on the low fan speed or middle or high, that selects your, your, your fan curve. And then the static pressure it, it hits in that range will dictate the airflow. And so great deal. And, these six and eight tons, these ducted units, they actually have full blown inverter boards inside the unit running these these blowers. I think it's a one horse motor with a full, a fully integrated inverter board. It's pretty cool. But uh, will the low airflow hurt them? No. I could put a piece of cardboard instead of the filter, and it would just it would run high static. Uh, but the motor would just you know match the situation, and you just have low airflow. Um, and I'll, I'll show what those those graphs look like. Um, but uh, the, the reason I started thinking about that is I found some uh, some cute pieces of paper that had been taped over a bunch of the registers, which I rip, promptly ripped down. But um, low airflow will never cause these units issues on the inside. What, it'll, what you'll end up with is you'll end up with the motors backing off, you lose airflow, the LEVs are then going to automatically track that airflow, and if it's flowing too much refrigerant, you lose the airflow, you're going to lose your superheat. Or if you're in heating mode, as it's flowing gas, you lose your, your subcooling. And so the LEVs start to back off as well. And so you don't, you're not going to freeze the unit up, you're not going to kill the motor. It's not like an ECM motor where you're going to, you know, blow that little resistor. What you're going to do is lose capacity. And so if you have a clogged filter or you block off a bunch of registers on an 8-ton unit, you may only get 5 tons out of it. Um, which is interesting because I've seen buildings with slightly oversized units and they have filthy filters and they don't even realize it. They may have a three ton in a space where they need a one and a half ton. <laughs> it's still holding temperature just fine. They just have really, really poor airflow, but you know, these units can handle that really well. Um, if it gets extreme enough, I suppose you could get to the point where the LEV couldn't back off enough. And then you could end up sending hot gas back where you should have liquid, or you could send in heating mode, or you could send liquid back um, when you should be sending, you know, superheated gas in cooling mode. And in that case, then you can mess things up if it gets extreme enough. But um, anyways, good first video. Um, if you like what you're seeing or you're interested in learning more about these as, as time goes on and service calls get ran, uh, I think I'm supposed to tell you to like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, if there's some sort of content you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below or message me or, you know, get that information to me somehow. So thanks for watching. Uh, this is the RF Viewpoint and we'll talk to you again next time.